We're unboxing one today. It's the HP Spectre X360-16. And, ugh. I don't know, I felt violent this morning. Did I say what this is, Jono? No. Oh, this is the HP Spectre X360 16 inch, and it looks awesome. This is a replacement for the HP Spectre 15, and it's the same size, but now it has a 16 by 10 display, which is freaking awesome. Oh, we also get a pen. Love to see it when that's included. It comes with additional tips, as I just found out when I accidentally dropped it. Let's see what else we got here. AC adapter, that's it. There is the charger. Let's see how many wattages we have. 135, that's pretty good. Is it going through? Ah, uh, boo, yeah. HP, give me type C. So this Spectre X360 is like a full generational update over the last one. It also comes in this nice, it's not quite black, but basically black color. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the look. It kind of, it looks premium, but it also kind of gives me like Chromebook vibes, if that makes sense. So this is what we have for IO. We have Thunderbolt 4, one there, one on the edge. Kind of easy to miss that one. We also have a headphone jack and a micro SD card reader. Around on the other side, we have a USB type A with one of these funky little fold down chummies, an HDMI 2.1 port, and wait, okay, scratch what I said before. Your headphone microphone combo is on this edge right here. And over here is the charging port. Opening up, this looks very nice. I'm glad that HP moved the speakers from up top down to the sides, and I imagine that they sound really great. And what also sounds really great is our sponsor today, MSI. Thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video. MSI has released their first microphone designed for streaming, the MSI Immerse GV60. Whether you're singing, running a podcast, or gaming, this microphone offers four pickup patterns to fit your needs. It features high resolution digital audio, offers real-time monitoring, on-the-fly controls, and plug-and-play functionality to help make your stream sound great while remaining easy to run. Learn more about the MSI Immerse GV60 streaming microphone at the link below. All right, let's turn this thing on. Oh, just from the login screen, I can already tell that this screen is friggin' wicked. Okay, yep, that's OLED. Those are some deep blacks. That is an awesome background for just showing off how excellent your black levels are on your display. Good job, HP. <laughs> what is super cool about this though, and you probably noticed it down here below the keyboard, is that we have RTX graphics. So inside of this is the NVIDIA RTX 3050. We also have an Intel i7 11390H. Love their naming schemes. 16 gigabytes of RAM, Wi-Fi 6E, and a one terabyte SSD with Optane. Now let's go back to the processor here for a second because this is kind of my least favorite part of this laptop. So the 11390H is a four core, eight thread processor. And as of a couple weeks ago, it sucks. So if you buy this laptop in a couple months, it will probably come with a P-series processor from Intel and just completely wipe the floor with this thing. You'd probably be getting four performance cores, eight efficiency cores. You'll have like 10% more single threaded performance, heaps more multi-threaded and way more battery life. It's really sad, I feel super bad for HP because if they gave this to me in December, I would have been like, wicked, they did such a good job. They have the RTX 3050 and this thin, relatively light machine. They've got an awesome display, 16 by 10. They took all of the notes of everything that I would want in a laptop that's like this, great job. And now it's like, great job in a couple months when you refresh it. How much is the laptop? The one you want starts at $1,700. And this one right here is over two grand. She's pricey. It is pretty interesting seeing these two laptops side by side. The screens are both 16 by nine. Although HP's is just so much bigger. Like, I guess it is just the way that they did the hinge. Dell did their hinge kind of like way down low. So the screen's right beside like your keyboard. Whereas HP has this kind of dual hinge on the go, which does add a fair bit of height, but at the same time, you can do this. And for a lot of people, especially if you're using this pen, that is going to be very awesome. So yeah, let's see how this laptop works as an actual laptop. I'm guessing the keyboard is excellent. And it is. This is 
a different feeling keyboard than I'm used to from HP. I don't quite know what's different. It reminds me almost more of like a Razer keyboard. As for the trackpad, this thing is great. I'm not seeing any sort of delay or anything. That's something that HP in the past was kind of bad for and it seems like they have fixed that. It isn't quite as large as the one on the XPS 15. Okay, it's actually a lot smaller, but you can see like based off of my grease from my hands, I don't use from here to here or there to there. So I think that this one is gonna be perfectly fine. One thing that I did just notice, and this is Again, the complaint that I always have with OLEDs. There is a little bit of that kind of weird graininess that I always find problematic on these. You're not going to care about it too much unless you have full white displays, but at the same time, like it's a laptop, you're going to be using things like Word and Excel. You're going to see the graininess. I don't think that's a bad thing because realistically, I'm not going to recommend you buy the OLED on this anyway because it's super expensive and HP's non-OLED screens are really, really good. The chassis rigidity on this laptop is fantastic. It is one of the best built laptops on the market easily. The whole thing's made from recycled CNC aluminum. I don't know, I would have never guessed that this was once Pepsi cans. There's one part of this laptop that I've been super excited to try out and that is the webcam. Well, there's the webcam, it's a five megapixel jobby which is, I can already tell you for sure, it completely just takes a dump on Dell's face. But there's another thing. Yes, ah, oh, here it is. The HP Glam Cam. Well, I can already tell you that this webcam is excellent. Like, look at my face. It doesn't look awful, but it has a couple more things. So the first here is the walk away lock. This is awesome because it just means that if you get up and walk away, uh, it should, lock itself. We'll see if it does. Yep, it's locked. Perfect. Yeah. That's nice. Now, wake on approach. Let's turn that back on. So now with wake on approach, let's see, I should be able to leave. And then when I come back, it turns back on. So now it is asleep. Sitting down. That was friggin' wicked. Don't even need to touch it. Boom, you're into your laptop. And finally, there's shoulder surfing. This is, this is a gimmick, but I think it's pretty funny. Jono, come over here and try and look at what I am looking at. I'm here, browsing photos. Oh, uh, there we go. It, it did immediately blur it. It's not that blurred. Yeah, though. it's not that blurred. I can definitely tell you're looking at underwear. What, what else do we talk about in laptop reviews? Crab rave. HP normally has really good speakers, and so far, these are also very good. Nice. There's not a lot of bass, but it's all very clear. Let's go to Dell. Hmm. Now, I'm going to say right now, the Dell speakers are better, but they sound worse because Dell's audio drivers on Windows 11 have been one of the worst experiences I have ever had with a the laptop. They're, they're actually so bad. The image quality is very comparable. The HP does have the edge on the black levels, that's for sure, especially on this next scene. Yeah, there's just more detail like in the trees and stuff. I don't think it's worth the downsides of like the weird graininess and stuff of the OLED display and the increased power consumption. I would just get their normal LCD display and save myself a couple hundred bucks. Yes, what else do we have to do? Oh, Valheim, I almost forgot we were downloading it. So do note that this is going to be performance while also capturing. So it's kind of worst case for this poor laptop, but at the same time, I imagine it's going to be fine. Okay, so we're on um, 1080p low and we're getting like 24 FPS. Um, actually, I'm going to stop OBS. So we went from like 23 to 26 FPS by doing that. So NVIDIA's NVENC encoder is still good and doesn't have a large performance hit. If you just want GPU acceleration for Photoshop and stuff, having a 3050 is going to be nice. If you want to play AAA games, manage your expectations is what I'm going to say. Oh, wow. Never mind. this thing's great. 
Just put it in performance mode on my FPS doubled right there. This, uh, <laughs> wow, we're getting F 50 FPS in Valheim. This is perfectly good. I'm sure that you could play like 1080p low. You're gonna be having a great time. One thing I wanna point out right here that I really don't like on HP laptops are these rubber pieces that go straight across the bottom. I say that because when they come off, you can't put them back on, they stretch and it's weird. And as part of my Intel upgrade, my girlfriend got an HP NV14, fantastic laptop overall, but the rubber foot after just a couple months has completely come off on the front from just like going in and out of a backpack. So in here, we can see that you get an 83 watt hour battery. That's a little bit bigger than the last generation. Very similar, I think the same as the XPS 15. And given that you only have a four core CPU in this, you'll definitely beat the battery life of the XPS 15. The repairability of this as a whole is excellent. I watched the teardown guide. And so you're able to remove the battery, trackpads replaceable, keyboards replaceable, screens replaceable, even the webcam you can replace. Like it's a separate little module, awesome. It would be pretty much top tier repairability scores, except the RAM soldered, which sucks because you can only buy 16 gigabytes. And given that this has like the GPU and pretty decent CPU. I could see lots of people that are like, well, that would want 32 gigabytes in a laptop like this. Because overall, this is quite a fantastic laptop. Like if you want a powerful flippy aroundy laptop, this is potentially the best one. Like look at these fans. Those are nice big fans, nice big heat pipes. As far as I could tell from the gaming, like the cooler works just fine. It's really annoying that you only get 16 gigabytes. So yeah, this is kind of like, this is the super close laptop. I just wish, <laughs> I just wish that they gave you a little bit more RAM. That's that's actually pretty much my whole wish. But uh, buy this laptop when 12th gen gets to it. Um, that's my conclusion. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>